when i was younger there was one woman i know that she used to live um, somewhere around me and when she's having conversation with my auntie she will be like her husband is against any form of contraceptive he doesn't use condom he doesn't want her to get like implants or anything that the bible says they are not supposed to spoil the seed because there's a part of the bible that says oh don't spill the seed before christians you should know what i'm talking about you can do your research on that but that is actually very very wrong because women should be um given the right to determine or decide what they want to do with their bodies and how they want to face their children or if they do not want to have children at all so that's why in this episode i'll be talking about contraceptive and everything you need to know from the type of contraceptive to the side effect and how they benefit you in the long run <music> I would like you to know that contraceptives work in different ways. Firstly, contraceptive work in a way that it prevents semen from meeting an egg to fertilize it. It also works in a way that it kills sperm to um, not reach an egg to eventually fertilize it. It also increases the cervical mucor to make sure sperm cannot swim past the cervix. And also, another form in which contraceptive work is to make sure um the lining of the uterine wall is thinned out so that egg cannot stick to the wall and eventually turn to an embryo so these various procedures are how your contraceptive work to help prevent you from getting pregnant however there are three categories of contraceptive and these categories include the sterile method the hormonal method and the barrier method before we proceed, I would like to wish all the women here a very, very happy International Women's Day. So me filming this video kind of coincides with the International Women's Day week. And I want to say I really, really appreciate you all. And I do not take your support and your love for granted. Thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for staying around. And thank you for learning the things I actually put on here. And I hope you continue to chase all your goals, all your dreams. And God helps um, them come to fruition for you. And I pray that eventually everything you set out to do and achieve in your life as a woman, as an adult, that you are able to achieve them and you find fulfillment in all that you do. Happy International Women's Day once again. I love you all and thank you very much for your support. So guys, let's get into it. So the first form of contraceptive I'll talk about today is the sterile category under which we have tubal ligation. So tubal ligation basically um, involves the cutting and tying of the fallopian tubes to prevent eggs from traveling downwards and for semen to stop semen from meeting it to fertilize an egg so this procedure is actually permanent and not reversible it is not reversible in like a lot of cases but most times you know the way the world works there is this thing of oh there's always one person out of the exception so yes you might not be that one person out of the exception and you might be that one person out of the exception of the exception so it's very important for you to bear in mind that this procedure before you decide to go for a tubal ligation have it in mind that once you undergo this procedure because it is also a surgical procedure you cannot come back from it that means you cannot have kids the chances of you having kids are very very slim as this is 98 percent effective when you get, undergo this procedure it is permanent but however it doesn't stop your period you will still get your periods normally as a woman the only thing is semen will not be able to go into your body to fertilize an egg you don't have to worry about pregnancies or anything as this only um, not only helps you not have children permanently it also doesn't affect your hormones like other birth controls it doesn't give you mood swings it doesn't give you headaches or dizziness like other form of birth controls the only thing it doesn't do it doesn't protect you from stds or sti like i said earlier so make sure you take precaution in that regard and before i stop talking about this particular form of birth control i will reiterate and say it is a permanent procedure so before you think of undergoing that form of birth control Please make sure you are rest assured that you don't want to have kids anymore and that you are good to go. But aside that, it is one of the most effective form of birth control you can actually be on and it helps you not to worry about pregnancy for the longest time or forever. Our next category of birth control is the hormonal category and I'll be starting with the IUD. So the IUD basically is um, known as the intrauterine um, device. So basically, this device is shaped like a T and it is inserted into the uterus and this helps to prevent semen 
from going into um, the vagina and up the cervix to eventually meet with an egg and fertilize it. So once you have an IUD installed inside, the chances of you getting pregnant is actually very, very slim, but not impossible. So it's always important for you to bear that in mind because most times people have um, we've heard stories of people's um, IUD shifting, but it is important that you also consider the fact that there's always that rare exception or rare cases or you know they'll say there are some babies that they must come to the world no matter how you try to stop them but not to discourage you or anything IUDs are very very effective and they actually help in preventing pregnancies so with everything that has an advantage it also has a disadvantage so the advantages of um, IUD actually involves that it doesn't affect breastfeeding in any way so also IUDs are like a one cost payment kind of thing. You don't have to like constantly pay for it or continually um, keep refreshing it or any um, thing like that. It lasts up to three to ten years and it's also very, very easy for you to take out when you are ready to take it out. And also, when you take it out, you can resume um, fertilization activities like having sex and doing stuff that will make you conceive if you want to have a child again. However, um, you have to go to a medical practitioner to insert your IUD. IUDs are not something that you can just do yourself at home. Yes, you cannot do that. And don't forget that you must make sure you are tested to make sure you are, your body is compatible with, IU, with the IUD. Because most people have um, recorded, most expert health practitioners will tell you that most people have come to complain that oh, after getting their IUD, they had excessive discharge, they had like maybe heavier um, periods, they started experiencing dizziness or high blood pressure. Yes, these are side effects of um, IUD as a contraceptive so this is why that's why it's very very important that before you go for any form of contraceptive you've carried out adequate testing um, the results have been confirmed that it is suitable for your body and for your system before you can proceed with it aside that IUD are actually very very good easy to use it is not a surgical procedure uh, most people actually experience cramping during the process of your medical health, um, health practitioner and inserting it into the uterus, yes, you might experience a bit of cramping. So most times they'll tell you, oh, you take a pain relief before you start the procedure, or if you have a strong um, threshold for pain, you can just um, let it go. And eventually, after a while, the cramping stops, and you are good to go, and you are protected for the next three to ten years. So IUD is actually very, very effective, very, very important to use, and it is a form of contraceptive I would recommend. Our next form of contraceptive is the birth control implant. So this implant is a flexible plastic rod which is implanted under the arm around this area so this implant basically releases hormones that thicken the cervical muco so when the cervical muco, muco is sticking it is very hard for semen to swim past the cervix then go up into the uterus and definitely fertilize an egg but in this case that cannot happen because the muco is sticking then also the wall of the uterus is actually thinned out thinned out in the sense that it will not be easy for an egg to actually go and implant itself there thereby leading to an um, leading to fertilization then an embryo forming and pregnancy eventually occurring so this method is actually very very important and very very effective also it lasts up to like three years when you get this implant in you can stay it can save you for a duration of three years and this three years period the arrest assured that you are not going to um be a victim of pregnancy or any sort of um, pregnancy scares or anything you do not want so when you are ready to take this out definitely you are ready to start maybe um to have a baby or to allow your body go through fertilization then conception and eventually you are good to go so everything that has an advantage has a disadvantage so the disadvantages of this particular form of contraceptive is dizziness weight gain mood swings um high blood pressure and a whole um, couple of other side effects but be rest assured that this does not pertain to everybody. That's why it is advisable that before you get um, a form of birth control, you consult your doctors to carry out tests on you to be sure that this particular form of birth control suits your system, thereby you don't have anything to worry about. This form of birth control can be removed at any time also, and it also doesn't affect your period. Your periods are still your periods. You don't have anything to worry about. The only thing you have to be grateful for is that, oh, come nine months, you do not have to like bother about maybe buying diaper or buy a meal for anything so yes i recommend this because a lot of testimonials from women across the world has proven that this particular birth control implants works and the success rate is actually 
very 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 high but to reiterate again always know that death control um, methods do not prevent you from sti or stds so you still have to take preventive measures against that to safeguard yourself and safeguard your um reproductive organs and every good thing in between so guys when you're looking for an option for best control this is an option to consider as you might you don't know you might just sit your body and give you the desired result our next form of hormonal birth control is the birth control pills so these pills are basically taken orally by women and they contain two very very important hormones which is called progestin and estrogen so this hormone basically helps and function in different ways to prevent pregnancy so first things first this hormones actually stop ovulation from happening in the sense that you cannot ovulate therefore when ovulation does not occur there is no way you are getting pregnant also it also helps to thicken the cervical muco so when cervical muco is thickened semen cannot sweep past the cervix into the uterus to eventually fertilize an egg and then cause pregnancy to occur this method is actually very 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 effective as far as you do not forget to take your pills because the failure rate of um, the pills failing people is because they forget to take their pills when necessary so do not forget to take your pills and eventually you are good to go also the side effect of this particular form of contraceptive involves tender breast irregular menstruation mood swings headaches dizziness and a whole lot of others so it's very important that before you decide to go on this particular form of birth control which is the pill make sure you've consulted with your physician and you are sure it suits your body so that you would have little to no form of symptom when you introduce this um, particular birth control to your system however like i said earlier it is very very important to make sure you do not forget to take your pills because the day you forget to take your pills definitely you've let or allowed the room for your system or your body your reproductive organs to do what it's supposed to do and it's doing what's supposed to do means pregnancy and you having a baby and you do not want that so when you're on the pills take your pills it is very 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 effective up to 98 percent effective the only failure rate is for those that maybe missed a particular day or they forgot it for a couple of days and they didn't get their desired results next form of best control i'll be discussing is the patch the patch is basically um, a square like patch like the name the, um, the pig that is um, that contains estrogen and progestin so basically these hormones are released into the bloodstream which actually helps to prevent ovulation and when ovulation doesn't occur obviously pregnancy cannot occur so this um, um progestin and estrogen that is released into the bloodstream helps women not to ovulate it also thickens the cervical mucor thereby making it impossible also for semen to swim through so guys if i've been following this um, conversation so far you will notice that most of this hormonal birth control they do almost the same thing but they just come in different variants and different forms that best works with an individual so like i keep saying it is important again to not just pick up any form of birth control and introduce it to your body without confirming from your um, physician to be sure that it suits you so back to the topic of the patch so basically the patch is actually administered and worn once every week so when you wear the patch like you stick it to either your abdomen most people stick it to their arms so um but do not stick it to your boobs you guys stick it to your um, belly like your abdomen your arm that's those are like the most um easily recommended places for you to stick the patch to and so once you stick it like okay for example we have four weeks in a month so sticking the patch basically on a monday means that once you stick it on a monday you do not take it out till the next monday to replace it with another patch so that happens like three times during the duration of the month so for the next three mondays of the month of the same month you are in you leave it in then on the last monday of the month you leave it because that is when your period eventually comes so during the course of your period there's no need wearing the patch because you are safe but once your period is over for that particular week and you are entering the new week you have to put on your patch again for me i'm not on any form of best control but i think if i should eventually get on best control i would prefer the patch because it doesn't um, involve me probably um forgetting to take a pill or maybe going through the pain of insertion or worrying about the fact that i have um an iud inserted in my uterus i feel like the patch is like the best option for me if i eventually decide to get contraceptive but 
However, guys, the part is actually very, very effective if you use it adequately. Most people that record um, recorded um, some sort of failure or failure, high failure rate is because they did not use it properly or probably it fell off and you didn't replace it properly or um, it's also advisable not to uh, maybe apply lotion or any form of oil on that part of your skin you are going to apply your patch to because you doing that will not make the patch stick properly so it makes it like fall off consecutively and that is not good because if falling off basically um, does not release the supposed um, progestin estrogen into your bloodstream thereby stopping fertilization so please take note also the patch is not advisable for women who smoke it's not also advisable for women who are 35 and above it is also not advisable for women who are diabetic or have high blood pressure. It is also not advisable for women who are on probably supplements or about mixtures and other form of medication. Like I keep saying, it's still easier for you to revert back to your medical health, health practitioner to know that you are on a safe side. Also, using the patch can actually come with some other baggages too, which involves um, probably getting a vaginal infection, dizziness, tender breast, um, mood swings also because it largely affects the mood. So it's also very important for you to make sure that even though you are experiencing these symptoms, probably they are very, very mild. You can still let them go. But if they are like really, really intense and so much for you to handle, quickly revert back to your medical health practitioner to either help you change your form, form of contraceptive or to carry out extensive tests to make sure that, okay, in other they are experiencing these symptoms, they might likely stop and eventually you'll feel better again. And now I'll be moving to our next form of contraceptive. And these are the barrier methods. Like the name implies barrier. When something is a barrier, like a stoppage, a blockage, it's not making you go further than it's supposed to be. And this alone should have told you people like some things or the other. To continue, we'll start with our first barrier method, which is the female condoms. Female condoms, also known as internal condoms or internal birth control, are also used to prevent pregnancies. So it's interesting to, to know that female condoms are actually pushed up into the vagina, almost touching the um, entrance of the cervix, and this largely prevents not just pregnancies, but STDs. So this is the only form of birth control for women that largely protects against STDs and STIs. These female condoms are actually not very common because most women do not tend to opt for this option of birth control. However, it's interesting to know that it can also be worn in the anus, like in the anal area, basically for people that have um, that kind of penetrative sex. So it's also a method to prevent STIs, STDs, and all, all forms of unwanted infections and diseases. Also, this particular condom actually um, prevents the external part of the vagina. Like, it prevents um, your skin, it, pre it covers up the vulva, and it prevents maybe skin-to-skin -skin contact of your partner with your vulva. So you are rest assured that you are not even going to get any form of maybe skin irritation or skin disease or anything you do not bargain for so it's actually very very effective it is easy to use and also you know that you are not just only preventing pregnancies you are preventing stds so i recommend you to get a female condom today you know you might just try it out and it works for you guys so just try it out it is actually not common because people don't really tend to opt for the option of female condom and also most people tend to use female condoms with femicide because it's more or less like okay you want to get that extra protection to be sure that no matter what happens you are not getting moved by anything and yes let me break down this or let me um, ease your mind on this misconception. So there's this mis misconception about female condoms. Most people believe that female condoms actually during the course of sexual intercourse that it can get lost in the vagina and you look for it and it will go inside because of the continuous um, trusting in and trusting out. But no, it doesn't work that way. It cannot get missing in your vagina. You are good to go. It is safe. It is effective and you are sure your safety is guaranteed. So guys, try it out today and come and thank me later. I've not tried it out before. I'm not even gonna lie. But with the reviews I've seen and with what I've heard, with the research I've done, female condoms are very, very effective, easy to use, and you are good to go. Unlike other forms of birth controls that have side effects, like maybe dizziness, headaches, um, vagina odor, or vagina infection, female condoms do not have such. You are good to go. You don't have to worry about you getting dizzy because of um, you using a female condom or anything. So you see why it's like 
I would say to a very large extent, it is one or if not among the top two form of vest um, contraceptive for women. So I'll just enjoy women on, on here and anybody that gets to see this video to make sure that you try it out. You can never know. I might try it out one day too. So when I try it out, guys, I'll let you people know. <laughs> but for now, I will just say it is very, very effective. It is safe. There's little to no side effect. Everything has a side effect. But for female condoms, you can be rest assured that there's little to no side effect. So guys, trust me on this one. You should try it out. Our next form of barrier birth control is the diaphragm. So basically, the diaphragm is made out of silicone or most times latex. And it's like shaped as a very small um, cup-like saucer that is basically worn um, around the cervix. So as it's worn around the cervix, it basically serves as a barrier to make sure semen does not travel past it and goes into the uterus so this form of birth control is usually um not so common but women tend to use them and it's advisable that if you decide to use a diaphragm as a form of um contraceptive you get spermicide alongside it because spermicide literally helps to kill semen and all form of um semen secretions diaphragms have however lost their credibility because they are not as effective as preventing unintended pregnancies. Yes, they are not that effective. So, there is um, a study that shows that diaphragm paired with spermicide are 88% effective, while diaphragms that are not paired with spermicide are about 80% effective so as you see that the um, margin for it not being effective is quite high over 20 percent or almost um yes 80 percent like 20 percent not effective so that's that's a huge that's a huge ratio so to a very large extent it is not using diaphragm is not like one of the safest form of contraceptive but it works for some people and it might not work for you so it is not really really advisable except you are ready to risk it all and know that oh okay whatever the consequences are i'm ready to go with it also don't forget that this form of contraceptive also has its own side effect that is why you see i'll be a very huge advocate for female condoms so the, the side effects for this particular form of contraceptive which is a diaphragm involves dizziness either light headedness chills and a whole lot of others still bearing in mind that this doesn't protect you from sexually transmitted diseases or infection like i'll say Female condoms are the go-to. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about. So diaphragms do not protect you against sexually transmitted um, diseases and infections. So make sure you still take precautions against those um, diseases and infections. So our next point, which is also very, very important, and which is a form of barrier contraceptive, is a spermicide. Yes, in my previous video, I discussed spermicide. And spermicide actually come in different forms. They come in gel-like forms. They come in foam forms. They come in suppositories that you can just like insert into the vagina and you do your thing. Yeah, so spermicide are actually effective. But usually, it is best advised that you pair spermicide with another form of contraceptive, either a condom. Because don't forget that spermicide are deposited into the vagina. So it's not like, okay, a male is rubbing a spermicide over his genitals. No, spermicide are deposited into the vagina whereby if semen eventually goes into the vagina it kills semen and it doesn't make it have any effect or any hold on you but using spermicide as a form of contraceptive also has its own side effects and these side effects are uh, they are not so palatable so um, the first side effect for um, using a spermicide like Con um, consecutively like or every time is like it leads to vagina irritation and when your vagina is irritated it leads to inflammation swelling redness and unnecessary form of discomfort spermicide also increases your chances of coming down with a vagina infection it can lead you to um, having cloudy urine or blood in your urine it can also lead to abnormal discharge so before you think of using spermicide as either a sole form of contraceptive or as an accompanying form of contraceptive please weigh the pros and the cons then you can now decide on what to do but like i will keep saying female condom <laughs> so guys that is it for spermicide as uh, as a barrier method our next form of barrier contraceptive is a cervical cap yes a cervical cap basically um, can be very tricky because a cervical cap and a diaphragm can be mistaken for the same thing. They can, it is actually very, very tricky. But it's important for you to note that cervical caps are shaped differently and are smaller than diaphragms. Yes. Um, the same, the major way of which um, a cervical cap can prevent pregnancy is still the um, same process of it being fitted against the cervix to cover the cervix to prevent semen 
from traveling up into the uterus eventually leads to fertilization then an embryo developing and a child forming in the long run in as much as it is tricky to tell the difference between a cervical cap and a diaphragm but the shape can actually always tell you the difference so a cervical cap is shaped like a sailor's hat why a diaphragm is shaped like a really tiny and small bowl yes yeah, so that's the difference so you should know what a sailor's hat look like that is how um a cervical cap is shaped while it's um a diaphragm is shaped um as a um as a small bowl however um cervical caps are also accompanied with spermicide in the sense that it is also very very good for you to not only rely solely on a cervical cap as a form of contraception you have to accompany it with spermicide so if in the case of semen leaking or escaping past um the um past the cervix the spermicide can also can always do like a recall and kill the semen before it goes to fertilize an egg and etc but it is also very very important for us to note that the cervical cap can be left in the vagina for up to 72 hours unlike the diaphragm which can just be only be left in the vagina for like maybe 30 hours thereabouts but you leaving the cervical cap in also has a side effect and one of the major side effects of a cervical cap is tss TSS is basically toxic shock syndrome and this is actually a bacterial infection that occurs in the body so the symptoms start with probably headaches, rashes on the skin, um, um, high temperature and eventually if not um, identified in record time and treated it leads to the failure of um, certain organs in the body like the livers, the kidneys and it can eventually lead to death. So yes, in as much as oh, you are trusting so much in um, the strength of a cervical cap to make sure that you don't get pregnant but also note that the side effects are actually very very dangerous yes they help but when it is not um, used properly or you're actually abusing how it's supposed to be used um, a toxic shock syndrome is one of the um, um, the disadvantages or one of the downsides of using a cervical cap. Vaginal discharge and odor can also be a disadvantage of using a cervical cap because the fact that all semen is inside accompanied with um accompanying with femicides and all sorts so a lot is literally going on now um, inside the vagina so this can actually this build up can actually lead to um irritation odor and even you coming down with an infection eventually so it's always very advisable to um maybe follow all the necessary precautions while you are using cervical cap as a form of contraceptive also this femicide that is actually put into the vagina can also help facilitate and fasten the irritation the vagina might experience because femicides to a very large extent can be harsh and maybe um, not um, gentle on the insides of the vagina wall so it's also very very advisable for you to know that you are using these measures of contraceptive appropriately to avoid um, the side effects happening to you and thereby causing you um, maybe issues you did not buy gain for or anything like that so guys so that's it on um, the barrier method of contraceptive to so wrap this all up i will say it again before you opt or decide to go for a form of contraceptive it is very very important to consult with your medical health practitioner because most forms of contraceptive are known to have caused stroke high blood pressure blood clotting um, um and a whole lot of diseases that uh, you do not want to deal with so it is advisable you go for proper checkup proper decision making either with you or your partner or just you alone women have a right to their bodies i will always say that a man should not determine the kind of your choice of um, contraceptive in as much as it suits your body and it's the best option for you you are good to go with it so guys make sure you do your research properly before you decide to get any form of contraceptive and also do not just say oh gloria said this form is better than the other form or you weigh the fact that oh this one gives me headache this one will not give me headache no it doesn't work like that it's always very advisable you consult to be sure you are um doing the right thing and you know that oh you will not get to a point whereby you regret your actions and the decisions you've taken so that's only the this episode guys so if you have stayed up to this point to watch my video thank you for staying tuned i do not take a lot for granted like i keep saying thank you g gang i do not take a lot for granted i really appreciate it and also do not forget to like subscribe and share this video as you don't know who you might be helping because this information might just reach somebody at the appropriate time and to help them reconsider their decision or their choice of a method of birth control they choose to use Thank you for staying tuned up to this moment, guys. Thank you very much. I love you all, and I'll see you in my next episode. Bye!